A territory of sea and mountains, North Carolina has been described by early explorers as the most beautiful land under heaven. But this coastal U.S. state hides its finest treasure inland, one shaped not by the forces of nature, but by the hand of man, Lake Norman. Located close to the capital city of Charlotte, Lake Norman is so large that it qualifies as an inland sea, covering an area of 132 square kilometers or 51 square miles and extending over 55 kilometers or 34 miles in length. It has become a paradise for anglers and boating enthusiasts. We have national fish tournaments that people come from all around. So there are a lot of fishermen that come to Lake Norman for sport fishing. You can rent boats, you can sail, you can rent houses or, or cabins on the lake. We also have the Catawba Queen. They have two boats out there, the Lady of the Lake and the Catawba Queen, on which you can take a, a luncheon cruise or you can take a dinner cruise. Lake Norman was created following the construction of a hydroelectric dam on the Catawba River in the 1960s. Its water is used to cool the reactors of a nearby nuclear power plant. But this lake is talked about for other reasons. It is said that its dark waters and jagged contours hide a mysterious creature, an as yet unidentified species of animal, one that is shy and mishappen. They said it was large, whale-like, dolphin-like that just sort of breached the water, had a, you know, a trail for a few minutes and then went back down again. There's stories of people being dragged underwater by a creature in this lake. Of a long lizard type thing with, with lots of teeth and four small legs seems to be the common description of him. I've heard people talk about um, witnessing strange movement in the water and maybe a, a wake following something that was partially seen, partially unseen. It had, to me, a, a, an alligator head with a snake body with two fins on the side with claws coming off those fins. That's what I saw. Two years after the creation of the dam, a rumor spread throughout the region causing widespread panic. Apparently, while working to repair the dam, divers were surprised by a large creature appearing out of nowhere. The Lake Norman monster. And of course, that's a lake monster down here that is reputed to uh, inhabit this lake that they built. They finished this back in 1963. And of course, they created this, uh, this huge lake, the largest lake in North Carolina. It's over 35,000 uh, acres of it. Ever since this happened, there's a lot of pro stories have cropped up. People have talked about seeing different things in the water. Well, after the dam was built, of course, this was a, um, a fertile fishing area. Uh, there were lots of crags and logs and that sort of thing for the fish to live in. The main story we heard was that uh, don't ever go swimming at the dam because there are catfish as big as Volkswagens. And of course, you could identify with a, a fish as big as a Volkswagen, which would be fairly intimidating. And we heard tales of divers who would be down inspecting the dam who would come back up and say, you won't believe what I saw. And that just fed into the um, to the whole, don't go swimming there because there's something down there. And of course, the tales of the Lake Norman monster, Normie. There have been various sightings um, of Normie and um, uh, some to be believed, some perhaps not. I have not sighted it personally, though um, we have a pretty big lake and uh, pretty deep water. Carl McCall lives on the edge of the lake and considered himself a skeptic concerning the rumors of a mysterious creature's existence until the day he and his daughter witnessed the monster for themselves. Honestly, nothing of that size um, I've ever seen before, making such a wake where it actually would rock a sailboat that's actually more into a dock. Yeah, it was pretty big. 
I didn't think there was like something that big in lakes, like maybe in the ocean, but it was really big and I didn't know what it was. Growing up near the shore, I know what whales look like in sharks. I've seen them dolphins, obviously, here in North Carolina. In the lake regions, you know, you see big fish and things like that, but nothing quite like this. And if I was the type of guy to actually take pictures and text, start texting people, then I definitely saw something that was a little out of the ordinary. Some local residents blame the existence of the monster of Lake Norman, nicknamed Normie, on the nuclear power plant located on its shores. But other interesting hypotheses could explain this mystery. If many believe that radiation from the nuclear power plant could be the origin of the Lake Norman monster, others believe that the creature lurked in the waters of the Catawba River long before the construction of the dam. John Hare is the author of 20 books dealing mainly with history. He investigated local legends to write his book Mysterious Creatures of the Tar Heel State. The Catawba River is uh, sort of steeped in uh, history and legends. There is a tradition, a long tradition, of stuff, uh, animals, mysterious kind of creatures inhabiting this river long before they ever dug this lake. I knew about the Catawba River because we used to sail and fish the Catawba River from up near Troutman all the way to where they built the dam. Lake Norman now covers over 530 miles of shoreline. So it, it's huge. It's bigger than the Sea of Galilee. And it's hard to imagine. There could be some creatures lurking in the deep because it's pretty deep down there where the original river went through. One of the prime examples would have been uh, the Catawba Indians used to tell the story about uh, a fellow that was uh, living in a little village over on the east side of the river. And he canoed across the river and he was hunting over there and he sees this, this, this huge animal he saw, so he's like, he didn't know what it was, it was there on the river, so then he gets up and to investigate, and it's a giant snake. So he's an Indian brave, he thinks, well, you know, it'd be, be kind of good to show this off if I took it back home, you know, and, and, and so he takes and shoots it with his bow and arrow. Well, it hits and it didn't kill, it just bounced off, but what it did was it made this animal mad, so the creature let go of what it was attacking and killed the Indian, killed the brave. This, so uh, he died there, his villagers you know, saw what had happened and stuff, and according to legend, sometimes it would sweep people into the river. There was a crossing place there, and it would sweep them down into a deep pool and take them down there and, and, and kill them. So. I've heard there were stories, but I never thought about them being weird creatures when I, when I was growing up. This is something new, you know, this Lake Norman monster. I think when you get a, um, a big body of water, that things like this will come up. There's all kind of stories going around about uh, monsters, and somebody has named one of them Normie after Lake Norman. I think that's amazing and, you know, a little fun. You know, I've never saw one myself. I was just interested in catching fish. There's been sort of a gap. You know, a lot, of, a lot of people in the knowledge. So, of course, you know, we have these stories back from the, the 1800s, then it comes up into the 20th century. Sort of this uh, latest manifestation came about back in the, around the year 2000. I started the website LakeNormanMonster.com after spending a couple of years here fishing on the lake, visiting local bait shops, talking to other fishermen, and just hearing fish tales that have happened, you know, from the entire history of the lake. And it, it turned into a, a little hobby just for people to come in and anonymously post sightings and grew from there and just kept growing and kept growing. And we now have over a decade of sightings through LakeNormanMonster.com. Honestly, I was surprised by the amount of sightings that came through the website. The um, local newspaper at the time picked up the website pretty quickly and published an article about it. And then the sightings just really started coming in. You know, the first month we had 47 visitors and the second month we had over a thousand and it just grew from there. The strange scene witnessed by Amelia and her father during a routine walk along the lake is not only engraved in their memory, they managed to take a few photos. While I was over here, it was a Saturday night, and I was walking up this path, and we saw a chair in the lake. And I said to Amelia, you know, let's go ahead and, and 
why don't you run over and get the chair in the lake? Because she was more dressed for it. And she had run around, and as she was running through the path to get on this side of the lake, I saw the chair bouncing up and down, and I started to watch this chair jump up and down out of the water. The chair was like in the middle of the lake, and right next to the chair, the head popped up and left a huge wake, and it was swimming really fast. What I saw come out of the lake was a, a long head like an alligator, um, but it did, definitely had a long body. And what had happened is it left the chair and actually moved around to the other uh, side of the cove there, where I actually where I was standing. And I watched it proceed to swim to the sailboat. And then behind the sailboat, it created such a wake that the sailboat was actually moving up and down and creating a wake. It was obviously attacking something, but we had watched this creature for about 10 minutes, maybe even 15 minutes, and it's watched it swimming back and forth from, the, from each side of the cove. Gus Gustafson is a fishing guide and seasoned fisherman. With 60 years of experience traveling to every corner of the vast reservoir, Gus thinks that the lake has kept no secrets from him except one. There's a lot of good reasons why the dam is a place that's a magnet for fish, particularly big, big fish. That's where some of the biggest catfish in the lake are caught. Some of the biggest striped bass are caught there. Many of the uh, normie sightings of Bender's at the dam. There is a, um, what they call a hot hole near the power plant where they put the water back into the lake. and that keeps that area warm year round. So during the winter, there's places for large fish to stay and feed and grow. It's very, very, very deep. So certain times of the year when the conditions aren't to their liking back in these shallower areas, the fish get down there in that deep water, particularly in the winter and in the summertime. It's just a place for them to, to spend time, sometimes maybe just even hibernate. If they're not feeding, they may just rest down there because it's kind of out of the way and it's so deep that uh, they kind of go unnoticed. fish really don't start growing if they have a good supply of food and if they have a big enough area. So there could be some rather large fish in and around the hot holes that just continue to grow and grow and grow. If one believes the fishermen's theories, fish observed at the periphery of the dam would tend to be oversized, but since its creation, Lake Norman has been regularly stocked, which has led some to speculate that Normie may be, in fact, the result of a crossing of species or genetic mutation. Well, you know, anytime you have a nuclear power plant on a, on a lake or a body of water, you're gonna get warmer water. We can actually swim here in February, in, in March, because the water is so warmed up by the new, those nuclear reactors. So we do get big catfish here. Um, the fish tend to grow a little bit bigger, but again, from what I saw, something this big was pretty amazing uh, to see. You know, it very well could be a crossbreeding of some sort. I mean, this, this lake was man-made. It was filled up, you know, from the dam they built in 1963. So, you know, it could be a crossbreed of some sort of creature or animal that they never really uh, found or anything. The, the, the greatest possibility is, is crossbreeding. There are fish that, in Lake Norman that are hybrid. There are fish that have been put in Lake Norman to help control things like hydrilla, uh, invasive weed, that uh, are not native and are supposedly sterile. But, you know, there's that great quote from Jurassic Park, life always finds a way. So it's possible that, you know, some of these hybrid fish that they've put into the lake are not sterile and have been reproducing and hybridizing with other fish that are in the lake. You know, I wondered about whether there was any truth behind the story, and I thought, oh, that's just one of those things that people talk about. But having been here for 40 years, it's something that so many stories, so many coincidences could not be based on false. They have to be based on fact. And people reputable of all ages and walks of life 
there's always someone that has seen him or seen some part of him, his tail as he goes down under the water, what have, whatever it might happen to be. You know, um, it's the preponderance of evidence that gives it credence in my mind, although I have never seen him. I was scared because I swim in this water all the time and I'm like too scared to go in it now because I don't know what it is. No, I'm a kind of a skeptic. I thought maybe it was just a different type of fish or something we've never seen before in these waters. But um, I have a boat myself, and I'd never seen anything like it. It was like a head of an alligator. A fin had popped out with, with claws on the end of it. This is not just an average fish that could shake a whole sailboat that's actually docked. My friends swim in this water all the time, and I asked them if they've seen something like that, and they have said no. They didn't believe me at first when I said it, because they were like, nothing's that big in the lake. But I was like, I saw it. And we do have uh, pictures of it. For the past 10 years, witness testimonials like Mokal's have been collected on a website dedicated to Normie. But even the most detailed reports, such as those supported by pictures, have not shed light on the mystery. We have had users send in photographs of things they see in the lake, and um, it's hard to say. Again, it's hard to judge distances. You know, you do see a head or a body with a wake behind it. it. It could be a small animal swimming. It could be, you know, a deer crossing the lake. It could be something breaching the water from below to eat. So, you know, there are a few photos. A few stories that made me question if it was true or not. One of them was actually submitted by a school teacher that had taken her class on a cruise through one of the local cruise ships. And she submitted the siding, but the entire class of 25, 30 children saw something breach the water and go back down. So that was, you know, a, a, a mass group siding there. And that made me think, well, maybe there is something big out there. One of the things would argue in favor of there being a possibility of there being a large animal out here is the fact that the story's not isolated to, to, to Lake Norman. But you find it in this same river system. You see it up there. And Lake James has its story of a monster. You also see the one down along the Santee in Lake Murray. I've even ran across an account of a sea monster uh, being sighted off the mouth of the Santee River between uh, Georgetown and Charleston. So if there is, uh, any sort of large creature. There's a river where, where that is a candidate in this neck of the woods to, ha to, to be home to some sort of large aquatic creature that's been here for, for millennia, even since before the, the Native Americans came, then it would be the uh, Santee Catawba system. Witness reports of a strange creature lurking in Lake Norman have been accumulating on a website dedicated to Normie. Summer Cloninger is one of the most recent witnesses of a strange phenomenon. She has always lived by the lake and has been surprised many times by alligators, water snakes, and other amazing animals. We were out here at the park and we brought our son to play. It was a really still day. There wasn't much, there weren't any many wakes or anything. We noticed the water, it just kind of started to raise up all of a sudden and it was this wake that came up. about what we saw was that on each side, the wake was like 10 to 15 feet long and it was pretty high. It was about like maybe like a foot high. Like it would come up a little bit enough to where you could see the top of its skin. And it was about the color of a lake, like, um, like a greenish brown color. It was making its way down toward this cove right here on Ranger Island. After we lost sight of it, we heard geese over there that were hanging out in the cove. They just took off. You know, they were making a lot of noise and they just took off, so that was kind of weird too. I spend about 200 days a year on the water. I can only come to a conclusion based on my own experiences. I spend a lot of time on the water. There's a lot of things that you can see on Lake Norman that we would consider unusual. 
But if you take a hard look at them, most of them are explainable. I've seen upside down canoes floating in the water. Now, a canoe from a certain angle in a certain weather might look like something that it isn't. We have a lot of docks on the lake and a lot of things blow into the water off of people's docks. I picked up a 10-foot wakeboard last year in the middle of the lake. As far as coves and on the lake and whether there's caves on the lake, yes, there's, first of all, there's thousands of coves on this lake. Uh, on the lower end of the lake, which is where I live, the, the lake is probably 95% developed. As you get further north on the river, there's less de on the lake, there's less development. And there are some small coves in there that are overgrown with trees and, uh, and things that would look like tunnels in the trees where one could define them as a cave where something could hide. Sure there is, there's, there's that on all lakes. I have learned in my 77 years never to say never and never to say impossible in terms of there being some uh, living thing in Lake Norman that uh, is oversized, let's put it that way. As for what I saw, I could just never really wrap my mind around what it could be, you know, given history of fish and their personalities and, you know, when they come to to the top and get air and just, yeah. It wasn't, it was, wasn't like um, any behavior that, you know, you would think from a fish, even like a giant catfish. They're bottom feeders, they stay toward the bottom, you know, like, and if it did come up and trail, like, I don't, I just don't see how it would leave a wake like that. It was just so weird. But I would like to know, um, what is in this lake that people keep reporting and that they're seeing, you know, it could be a new species that has never been discovered, you know, all around Lake uh, Norman, just North Carolina, just the Catawba River, there are so many sightings in lakes, that, you know, it's just really strange. There's something to it. An avid fisherman, Captain Gus regularly searches the waters of the lake with a well-equipped boat. From time to time, he even puts his boat at the disposal of visitors curious to learn more about this legendary beast. Well, what we're gonna do today is we're gonna look for Normie the Lake Norman Monster. It's a, it's a quest we've been on for 10 or 15 years now, and uh, some days we see some indication of them, a lot of days we don't, but we've got electronic equipment on the boat. We'll use our eyes, we'll use our ears. What we've got here is we've got some pretty sophisticated uh, electronics. Uh, we've got GPS, where we, we, we've actually got a topo map on here where we can see the bottom contours. We've got two. Um, we got two imaging devices. This one shows off to either side of the boat. This one actually shows. You can see we're going over a little brush pile or something right down down there now. It'll show objects below the boat. It'll show. It'll show brush piles. It'll show fish. It'll show uh, anything that just happens to pass under. Now see. A lot of people mistake what we're looking at there, and they'll think that's the monster itself. Actually, that's a school of bait fish all bunched up. And they're just a school of fish swimming just in, together. They swim together for protection from the, the bigger fish. All right, here's our boat coming along this drop-off right here. And what we're going to do now is we're going to go back in the back cove over here. Fish images right here. See the fish down there? Those are fish. They're not big enough to be a monster. If you'll notice, we're in 42 foot of water right now. Uh, the lake is why the lake is perfect for, for uh, a monster of sorts. That it's as deep as 130 feet. It's 34 miles long, it's seven miles wide. There's plenty of places for a, a big animal to hide. As you get back. 
back in some of these back coves like this, see, it's real quiet. You don't see a lot of people around. And these, these, these creatures can slither along. They can either go under the water or they can come just below the surface. And they'll slide up in and out of these places and, and they'll never be seen because nobody really cares and nobody looks for them. The captain assumes that the beast he's been looking for all these years in the depths of Lake Norman is probably the same one that terrified divers busy repairing the dam in the 1970s. Every lake has about the same story where the divers are down there working and doing whatever divers do at the dam. And if all of a sudden the sun's blocked out and they look up and there's a gigantic something swimming above them and they get scared and they get out of the water. And in the case of Lake Norman, when they reported their sighting to whoever their boss was, he, they were laughed at. And uh, they just, they didn't say they'd quit, but they never came back to work. And they just, they just refused to go back into Lake Norman because they know they had seen what we're looking for today. Rational and scientific explanations are obviously a strong counterweight to the many assumptions about Normie. Jake Bussolini, expert freshwater fisherman and author of several books, sides firmly on the side of the skeptics. Well, one thing, I'm a specialist in sonar, uh, underwater image detection. And uh, I have sonar units on both of my boats, and uh, they're always on from the time I leave the dock till the time I come back. And uh, anytime I see an image on my sonar that's unusual, I take a picture of that image with my digital camera, put it right in my computer, and I have thousands and thousands of photographs of underwater images. And I use those in my books and I use those in my lectures to show people what's going on under the water. Here's a photograph that I took of something that looks to be about 15 feet high. It could even be imagined to have a tail on it if you look down on the right-hand side. This is a very common photograph. This is a school of about 2,000 perch. Oh, I have seen on my sonar, I have seen abnormally large images underwater, but I was able to explain them all as, as, as very large schools of fish. We have the uh, snub-nosed gar in this lake. They are a very unusual looking fish. And uh, I have personally seen six foot long gar uh, in the water. And uh, a gar to someone who's not used to seeing gar is a very weird looking fish. People get frightened of them, but they really do no damage. They're really surface feeders. They keep the water clean. And they're actually a very good fish to have in the lake. If it's not a monster in Lake Norman, I would probably speculate that it's a large fish. It could be a gar. Uh, it could be something along you know, that lines. We have had an alligator caught in the lake. That was uh, a pet that was released, though. They're not usually native to this area. So it you know, could have been anything like that. And then, you know, people get out. It's hard to judge distances on the lake, especially if it's you know late in the day or early in the morning and you see something. It could be very small, close to you, or it could be very big and far away, you know, if you're not familiar with navigating the lake. Part of the problem that we have on, on these reported sightings and photographs is we, we never kind of hear the conditions that were surrounding at the time. Was it springtime? Was it winter? Was it windy? Was it not windy? For instance, out at the end of our cove here, there's a very long sandbar, and it's very shallow. And in the springtime, the big carp, and these are three and four foot long carp, they go out onto that sandbar to spawn. And they spawn in shallow water near the surface, and they create a lot of waves. I've seen them, I've been there, I've, I've, uh, I've fished in those areas when they were spawning. And they will actually create, if, if you get enough of them spawning the same way, they'll create a little bit of a wave that may be six to eight inches high.
With regard to the nuclear plant and, you know, the possibility of nuclear radiation, of course, that's always a question that people have. Uh, from my technical background and from my understanding of the technology of this particular nuclear plant, I would be very doubtful that there's any possibility of radiation exposure. Now, again, I can never say in, it's impossible because, you know, we don't always know what's going on inside that plant. The only thing I would see that would pose a threat because they pump so many gallons of this lake through the reactor coolant, you know, the whole systems cool it down. Um, they pull so much water in, you know, like one and a third times what the lake is, is what I've been told. But, you know, if anything had been compromised and some kind of material reached the lake, which is pretty rare, I would think, because um, there's so many safety standards they have to abide by. But I think what would it would really do is maybe like, um, just kind of like genetically alter their genes, maybe just um, kind of make it more sick. I don't think it could develop a huge creature like people would think it would morph and, you know, because like looking at what radiation can do to your genes and your cells, it doesn't really work that way. It's more just quick to kill you and just kind of give you deformities. I don't really think there's a link between the nuclear plant and whatever this is, especially given like, other lakes around here, you know, they're seeing similar things, you know. Um, so I just think that maybe there's a species, you know, we have 95% of our waters are just unexplored, you know, so maybe we can't really say what it is. Until somebody can bring back some proof, like some actual verifiable scientific data, this means uh, not photographic proof, but, but the actual creature itself. Until somebody can do that, then, then it'll remain just a really good part of our folklore, which is a valuable part of our folklore, and it's a part of our traditions and our heritage. And so it's just a, uh, it's just the latest in a long series of tales that sort of try to explain maybe what they don't understand that's out here. Maybe they see out there, they see some animals, they, it's just the way they come to, uh, come to deal with uh, uh, what, what's living out there. Whether skeptical or not, all the residents of Lake Norman agree that the monster of Lake Norman is the true star of the region's folklore, a folklore otherwise dominated by incredible fishing stories. Like, uh, you could say they're just good fishing stories. A lot of times they'll come back and say, I, I caught a fish and he was this big. And you know, each time you tell it, it get gets bigger and bigger. So. You know, who knows? Maybe somebody saw a, a big gator or something out here one time, and, and then uh, next thing you know, they get to tell it, and it's the Loch Ness monster swimming around out here. You never know. But uh, if there is anything out here, though, this would be a prime candidate for a large creature. Of course, this has got a lot of habitat out here, a big lake. When I was uh, when I was younger, I always, you know, had the open mind to possibilities of paranormal creatures and things like that. But uh, I'd like to say I'm still a child at heart and would like to believe that they're seeing something out there. You know, enough people have submitted sightings and said that they've seen something. You know, obviously there's something there. What it is, I don't know. I don't think it's a dinosaur-like creature that's been mutated, but I, I do think that they're seeing something large and something unexplained. And the uh, unexplained has already always fascinated me because I, I want to know the answer. You know, I want to I want to know what the answer is. I want to explain that unexplained so people can go, oh, that's what it is. You never know. Uh... You know, we might chuckle at them, but 100 years from now, some scientists, anthropologists might sit there and say, this is interesting to see how these people develop this story and, and how they develop their own folklore to explain something they didn't know anything about. If you go back um, and look in, in through some of the history of the early history of this area out here back in the in the 1800s you will see that the the stories of a large creature living in the river were still prevalent even uh at, back in those days and although you don't really you know, haven't really found an account where they say oh you know such and such caught a you know a big snake here or there or whatever 
they, it was such common knowledge that a lot of the merchants would use it in their advertising. And so even back then, you know, they, they, they knew the value of uh, having some sort of uh, unusual creature, so to speak, and, and, and from a tourist standpoint. Hey, boys and girls, have any of you ever heard of Normie? Yes. Normie is a lake monster that lives right here in Lake Norman. My wife is a third grade teacher at a local private school. She uh, has always wanted to write a children's book. And when we started doing the Lake Norman monster sightseeing cruises, we needed something to entertain the children other than just, you know, telling them stories. And she said, I've always wanted to write a book. Now's my chance. And a few years ago, my husband and I were talking and came up with the idea of writing about a book about um, Normie the Lake Norman monster for children. Because we thought it'd be fun to put a friendly face to the monster that we've heard about. So I, I spent a few months writing in, you know, asking for help from friends of mine and what did they hear and what did they notice on the lake and um, came up with a story about Normie looking for friends, which I think a lot of kids can relate to. a fun morning cruise for kids to come out with their parents and they hear a story and they get to look on the lake and it's really great because as we're we're going along we can point out the things that we've talked about in the book like uh, like the osprey on the shoal marker and point out some of the local wildlife when normie resurfaced he was holding some mud from the lake bottom would this help normie asked the osprey looked down at normie's eager face down in the water it's kind of cool and it's kind of neat because the kids are just they're really into it, and they just, and they know about Normie. They know a lot more about Normie than most people know. What? I think I've seen Normie. Yeah? Once, when, I, well, when we were driving to school. What did he look like? Um, it was just like this big hump in the water. I think that was his back or something. It could have been his back sticking out. What, what color was he? Sort of green, greenish yellowish. Did you see any eyes? No, because I think it was the back. You saw it back? Yeah. Now, who else has seen Normie? Me! And they get out here, and, and, and if you get 50 kids on the boat, about half of them will see it or see something they think is it, and the other half probably don't care. But what they'll do, when you ask them, what did you see? Some people see a big, long object. Some see a fat, round object. See something with big eyes, big old dorsal fin coming out. Sometimes it's red, sometimes it's green. Some of them have binoculars. Some of them have their mom or daddy sunglasses on. They have these long-billed hats, binoculars, and, and they just, they have a lot of fun. One sign that Normie is firmly rooted in local folklore, it is said that children are already convinced that they have seen a giant and abnormal creature on the lake's surface. Here, it is the children who most benefit from the magical qualities of the legend of Lake Norman. But I still believe he is real. I think he's great. I think it's a type of underwater it doesn't have any claws, it has fins so that it can swim faster to catch the fish, Daddy. I think he's a dragon that can swim. He is a nice monster! For children, an army has a unique appeal because he seems to be a friendly fish and that kind of thing. And when we have our festival in springtime, it's called the Ray City Festival, there's always an art and coloring contest is to see who can draw the closest likeness to an army. And so that's one of those things. You stimulate their creativity, their artistic talent, that kind of thing. And um, uh, that's really what draws interest. And we get people come from across the country that want to come to this area for the, for the festival. And so looking to find likenesses of Normie are really uh, one of those attractions that bring people to Mooresville.
to me when I was a child. <laughs> I'll give an example of how it's changed. When I was a child, if I saw an automobile with a South Carolina license tag on it, to me that was a foreigner. <laughs> and now we see people from all over the world comes here. Lake Norman is a, like I say, a big draw for tourism. It is huge. And particularly when we do those summer trips with the children, we've had as many as 100, and 100 plus on the boats, uh, if you count the parents and everything. And I mean, they're just having a blast. And we wouldn't, we wouldn't have that many people come out for anything but something exciting like that. And it just, it, 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 it just uh, excites the imagination of these little guys. And they kind of keep us going and get us rejuvenated too. Right here. Having raised small children here, oh yes, the monster is very real, and we have gone on many trips looking for the monster. We never saw him, but we know he's there. We're trying to make fishing an outdoor activity that brings the family together. So from that point of view, I think Normie is very positive because if a family is going to hop in a boat or rent a boat and go out on a lake with their kids for the day and their purpose is to look for Normie, that's a good thing. I think it's good that gets the kids off the computers, it gets them off the iPads, it gets them off the iPhone, and it puts them in the outdoors. History of the monster is a draw. And the thing about it is that we have young children that go out early in the morning to try and capture him at first sunlight. They have contests, art contests, to try and draw the likeness of the monster. And so I think that just adds to the, uh, to the lore and the enhancement of, of our lake. And, and um, so just the idea that there's, there's uh, something to go find that perhaps no one, has, no one else has ever seen. I think everybody wants that opportunity. What have the monster sightings done or all the talk and all the notoriety about the monster sightings done? Well, it's changed the way it's a lot of, a lot of times when people just want to go out here and do sightseeing, one of the first questions they ask is, what's the story with the Lake Norman monster? What's the story? They don't even know his name. They don't know we call him Normie. And uh, so we get out here and it, it becomes a part of our, part of our tour. We'll look at the nice houses. We'll, we'll, we'll do a lot of wildlife, bird watching, different things as we're on the tour. And you know, every, you know everybody's looking for that monster too. They just want to get a glimpse of him.